Let's go now to the VMA waterfront uh, where we find our reporter Mariska Bota who is standing by with the Premier of the Western Cape, Alan Windy, who is going to be talking to us about how, um, you know, the Western Cape is going to be balancing some of the rising COVID numbers that we're seeing. Mariska, one of the things that we've seen is that the numbers in the Western Cape are quite concerning when it comes to COVID-19. At the same time, I see and hear in the background that some people are quite excited to still be out and about talk to us about how the province is going to maneuver and balance the numbers as well as uh, livelihoods here you're absolutely right we're standing at the vna waterfront one of africa's most visited tourist destinations on our continent this is probably the most visited destination uh, there's some music in the background a lovely ambiance that the southeast east has just started to pick up a little bit. That means it's finally summer in Cape Town. Um, but let's dive right into what you were asking there. We have the Premier with us, Alan Windy. Premier, thank you very much for making time for us this afternoon. Um, let's first of all talk about it. The question was raised, how do you mitigate uh, the risk of COVID-19 versus the jobs that are needed, so critically needed in tourism, and still allowing people to enjoy a little bit of a festive season? So... Outdoors, fresh air, a bit of southeast, uh, that's one of the best mitigations. Um, I really am uh, so happy that our hospital numbers are down. We're seeing the infections go up, but it's not affecting our hospitals as yet, and that's really encouraging. Um, markets are open, and as you can say, you've just said, you can hear the music behind me. Suddenly, buskers who weren't making any money, I can see the boat charters here out of the waterfront filling up with people. Um, but it's not overly full. I look at the airport numbers. Uh, we're not where we were, and it was definitely the red list that I think slowed down uh, some of the travellers. But we're also seeing encouraging travellers from within our country. So we're welcoming Kautengas here into the Western Cape at the moment. And as you can see in the waterfront, uh, a large number of people. But across our province, we're seeing it up in the Garden Red, we're seeing it up in Vescus. So it is good to see that, uh, you know, that, that hospitality sector, which is a key component of our economy, is now at least able to, you know, put some bread on the table. Mm -hmm. You, as you were saying, the uh, hospitality tourism is one of the key economic drivers in the Western Cape. Uh, last year was a very different story. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? And you were vehemently opposed to closing borders, the red list, for example. You were very outspoken about that. Um, why are you so outspoken against closing of borders when numbers are rising? So everything we do must be based on science, must be based on what that science is telling us. And uh, I mean, our scientists were showing us that uh, in actual fact, the closing does not uh, stop the spread. And we've seen more cases now in the UK than we're seeing in South Africa. So uh, it, the red just didn't make any sense to me. And right now, I'm grateful that it's now opening up. But there's other countries that still haven't opened up for us. And we need to really base it on the science. We need to show that it's not actually the slowing down or the blocking of the travel. It's how we operate generally. So it's wearing of masks. Um, I might have taken mine off now, but you'll see when we walk around the waterfront, we put our masks on. Uh, we, we have to get that behavior right. We are saying outdoors rather than indoors. I'm really grateful that our towns, the city and our towns are spilling their restaurants out into the streets. They're closing, closing streets off. So you sit in the open. It, that's, we've got to do those kind of things that are creative that actually enables this hospitality industry to operate. We cannot afford for another season to be lost. And so it won't be a season like 2019, but it's going to be at least a much better season than last year. And it's a build up as we start to get back onto our feet again. Do you think this is everybody was talking about the new normal a while back? Is this going to be our new normal mitigation, but cautiously going ahead with, you know, our daily lives? So, I mean, we obviously all the whole world is learning all the time. I think if I look at the data and we'll have our cabinet again, the national cabinet meeting again this week, uh, we'll be analyzing that data to say, so what is slowing it down? Um, what has the effect been of vaccines? I'm really grateful that specifically 50 and over in our province, we, we're way ahead in our country. Um, and so that's going to be, we can see it in the infection rate is definitely affecting younger people. So we can see the vaccines are creating a protection. Um, we also in summer, 
uh, and outdoors. So there's a whole lot of things, behavior, all of those things uh, definitely help to mitigate risk and get that balance right. It's always about balancing lives and livelihoods. And of course, if we start to see our hospitals getting burdened, we have to make different decisions. But right now, everything seems to be okay. But we're also asking visitors, please, you have to play your part when you come here. Now, let me put you on the spot, and I might get you into trouble for this. The Western Cape is beautiful. Which are some of your favorite parts of the province that you are uh, the boss of? So, obviously, as a premier, I'm not allowed to choose one. <laughs> I'll have every mayor on the phone to me. Yeah. Um, but, of course, I mean, this, we're in the waterfront. I mean, the best destination on the African continent. But you just go up the coast and you, in, as the mayor of Amarna says, the Riviera, or you go a bit further up into the Garden Route, or you go up the Vescus, there's so many unique opportunities and differences. I mean, it is so different of the Vescus to the Garden Route. But they are just unique and they are amazing. So I can't really choose one. Um, obviously, I come from the Garden Route. That's my home. But uh, it, there are so many places in this province, from the Karoo and the stars at night uh, to cycling anywhere across our province. There are so many opportunities to enjoy this amazing southern tip of Africa. And please uh, tell our viewers as well the little anecdote about West Grove that they're advertising in the UK. Well, uh, first of all, West Grove just finished advertising in Gauteng. Uh, so we're welcoming our Gautengers. But uh, we, I don't know if you've seen, but uh, with the red list in the UK opening now to, to British citizens to come uh, to the Cape, we've just launched uh, a program now in West Grove where we're advertising to say, come to the Cape Riviera if the French Riviera won't let you in. So, of course, we're also <laughs> using um, these bands and these travel bands to our advantage now because we were so disadvantaged with them right in the yeah. beginning. And really, oh, that's a bit of cheeky advertising. Yes. But that's what we've got to do. We've yeah. got to, we've got to sustain this, uh, this economic component, which is very important to our economy in the Western Cape. Thank you very much. That was the Premier of the Western Cape, Alan Windy, talking to us about the importance of the tourism industry. And without it, the economy in the Western Cape would greatly suffer. And that's why he was so vehemently opposed to any kind of closure, saying that everything has to be science-based, fact-based. And that's what they're basing their welcoming of visitors to the Western Cape on. To chat to us a little bit more about this glorious location where we are right now, the VNA waterfront, we have Donald Cow. Donald, oh, as well. Thank Thank you very much for joining us here. You are the most visited tourist destination on the continent. Talk to us a little bit about what that means. How, how is that measured even? Well, we get about 26 million visitors coming through here every year. And this is made up, of course, of the international visitors that we get, but a lot of locals from upcountry as well as Cape Townians who view the waterfront as their favorite um, destination to shop, to work and to play. Donald, but the last 18 months has been a nightmare for everyone. And this is probably a very good barometer of how the tourism industry is affected here at the waterfront. What does it look like for you in the past 18 months and what does it look like now? So if you can imagine, I mean, in March when the lockdown um, kicked in, we would have gone from a peak summer season where we would be seeing 80,000 visitors coming through daily into the waterfront. That went down to about 3,000 visitors. Um, it left this place looking like a ghost town. And luckily for us, up until the third wave passed and the lockdowns have come down, we've started to see visitor numbers slowly creep up. Obviously, we would have started to see an increase in international visitors around November, but because of Omicron, that's put that back a little bit. But just for evidence, this past weekend, the Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we had the best visitor numbers, the best trading volumes in the mall for this past year altogether. It's starting to pick up, it's starting to look positive. Um, we know that cruise, for example, is suspended, cruise shipping, but they'll come back around January. So we're looking forward to that. But people have been coming out because they want to take a break. They want to enjoy a quick weekend out in a safe environment like the VNA, where social distancing measures are in place. Um, but they can really enjoy themselves in our, our fresco outdoor experiences and restaurants. So is there some hope for an industry like yours? Uh, do you think there's reason to hope? Let me put it that way. 
there's definitely reason to hope. Um, key to the recovery are elements like vaccine drive. I mean, we, we got to realize the opportunities around what that represents for establishments to in, allow people in to enjoy themselves feeling safely. That's key. The return of international visitors, of course, is key. Um, and those sectors that support international visitorship into the city and into an environment like ours. Um, those are going to be some of the key parts of why people want to come out and enjoy themselves in environments like the waterfront. You touched on it a little bit earlier. Yes, international tourists are important, but so too are your local tourists. They make up a big proportion of your visitor numbers. Why is it so important that South Africans come and see the waterfront? It is the country's best loved destination. In fact, 70% of our visitors actually are Cape Tonians, and they are the repeat visitors. They like the waterfront because part of what it is, it's about their own experience and their own lifestyle and what they really enjoy to do on a weekend when they come out and they make a trip of it, and they can spend a whole day enjoying a myriad of activities. One of the key ones right now, in fact, is the amount of people that are going out on our sunset cruises just because they can take a break head out for two hours out to Cairns Bay on a boat and come back into the waterfront environment. Gautengas, Joe Burgers will be coming down um, immediately after the Christmas period. We'll see a bump in numbers coming through for that. Um, and then as I say, the international visitors, we know that some of them have retained their trip bookings um, in January, which is normally the peak season, January, February, March, with crews again coming back into, into season. So we hope that there is still opportunity, um, but, but really it will all hinge on the vaccine rates because those are really what allow us to stay at a lockdown level that we are currently on without any further restrictions um, and for people to come out and enjoy themselves. Thank you very much. That was Donald Cow speaking on behalf of the VNA waterfront here in Cape Town. It's very serious stuff. It's, it's vaccinations, it's keeping distance, but then also there's a little bit of hope. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, it seems, of listening to these two speakers, the Premier and to Mr. Cow. It's about what we've learned in the past 18 months and putting that into practice and not just shutting down everything permanently. We have to get back on our feet. That's the message that they, they're giving us here. People must carry on with their lives, as difficult as it is, as uncomfortable as it may be with um, masks and, and, and hand sanitizers. But that's the way to get businesses open again and to get life back, back to normal as much as possible. Um, but with that and then with the beautiful music here in the background and the table mountain there watching over us, I hope you're a bit jealous in Johannesburg. We give it back to you in the studio. You have no idea how jealous we are, uh, Mariska, of that view that you have there and the t entertainment behind you. It's good to, to hear stories of hope, uh, you know, amid such serious problems and challenges that uh, the Omicron variant has caused. But really hearing just how hopeful the VNA waterfront is to attract visitors.